Hey, I'm Mike from Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to Sepulchral Guard Paint by Numbers Part 4 Leather. This one's going to be a pretty quick video. It's going to focus just on his belt, the small leather straps holding his armor and buckler in place, and the little bits of skin underlying the fur around his collar. I'm going to begin by base coating those areas with Mornfang Brown. Now at this point I'm being very very careful with my base coating because I don't want to accidentally paint over the bone or copper areas that I've already worked on. If I do that's totally okay, it's alright to make mistakes, but I prefer to avoid them where I can. I'm going to assume this is actually his shoulder blade sticking out and leave it as bone. Now he does have a strap going across his chest here as well, so I'll make sure we get that. I'm actually going to paint the entire back of the buckler in brown here. Uh, the intent is that I'm going to make the rest of it look like wood later. I'm just going to hit it with the brown while I've got it on my palette. Now this angle is a little bit trickier to paint, let alone film. And of course this piece of armor, because it's held tight to his chest, doesn't really have a leather strap to worry about. So next I'm going to wash all the leather with Agrax Earthshade. Now, like the Nuln Oil in the Steel Step, Agrax works really well as an outlining method. You can see if I just spill a little bit over the edges of the leather, it creates a nice stark outline around the leather. Kind of gives it a little bit of, not necessarily a cell shaded look, but something along those lines. Helps make the parts stand out 
from their surroundings. Now over the bone, I want to be kind of careful. I don't really want too much of the Agris Urshade spilling out onto the bone because it is a very dark color. I want to create shading and outlines. We don't want to ruin what we've already done. You can see it's already dry on the belt. I'm going to come in for a second pass here. I just noticed there's actually a little bit, this little bit here is actually the belt kind of looped around and sticking out. So just before I carry on, I'm going to come back in with the base coat color and just make sure we get that as well. And I want to just view it from the back because it does jut out, so you will see it from different angles. Alright, so now I'm just going to set the model aside to let that wash dry. If this is the only model you're painting, you might want to consider using a hairdryer to speed up the wash drying process. You'll get it down from minutes to mere seconds. If you're batch painting a bunch of models, just set this one aside and it'll be dry before you get done the last one. So once that wash of Agrax Urshade is fully dry, it's time to layer on a little bit of scrag brown just to brighten up all the leather. So I'm leaving the areas where the wash is deepest, where you know the different parts of the belt here overlap, where it meets the buckle and so on. I'm leaving those alone so they stay nice and shaded. I'm really just working on the most raised areas. Now the back of the buckler itself, I really just painted that brown because it was a good opportunity at the time. And I will be coming back to actually paint that in wood tones after. So for now I'm just going to leave it alone. It's brown because it looks better than being bare. So finally I'm going to add some edge highlights using Flayed One Flesh. I'm going to get this on the palette and probably mix some with the scrag round. Because I feel like this is going to actually be a little bit too far of a jump on its own. So first we're going to try that out. I'm going to take a little bit of the scrag ground, just move it to the side here, grab a little bit of the flayed one flesh, a little more than that. I want it more towards the sort of cream color of the flayed one, just a little bit of that sort of orangey tone from the scrag brown left. I'm going to use this as an edge highlight in very few cases here.
So now I'm going to use just a little bit of pure flayed one flesh and just add a few finishing touches. I want even less than that on the brush. I want almost nothing there. It's just adding just a touch of color. Now if you want your leather to look old and cracked, you can actually just add some quick little lines as well to it. It really depends how much detail you want to put into this piece. Alright, this skeleton's leather is done. Next up we'll be painting the cloth, which is really just this one solid piece here. I'm going to be painting that in red myself, but you're welcome to use whatever colors you like. Hey, I hope you enjoyed my video. There's plenty more here on YouTube, as well you can join me twice a week at twitch.tv slash epicstudios, usually on Tuesday nights and Sunday mornings, Eastern Time, where I do stream my painting. If you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck, even given as little as a dollar a month helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing. Of course, you can also help by just hitting subscribe here on YouTube or sharing this video with a couple friends. Thanks a lot.